Okay, let's put the tour to India in terms of the pro tiers and, of course, the Rugby World Cup to one side and talk MMA and mixed martial arts. Now, with just two days to go until EFC 82 at the Big Top Arena Carnival City, you know that we had to bring in some of the main players to get their perspectives ahead of that big event. Now, live with me in studio is the man that will be fighting for the undisputed welterweight title. That's Temba the Ansar Gorimba and, of course, EFC Vice President Graham Cartmel to my immediate left. Now, um, Temba... Afternoon, uh, guys. Tim, if I can just start with you. Uh, I can't complain. Never complain. <laughs> Anytime I've got EFC people in my studio, I'm a good guy. Um, <laughs> just in terms of, of you and Luke going at it, we've, we've heard you, um, you know, accusing Luke of a couple of things here and there. Just talk our viewers through what your gripe is with Luke Michael, your opponent on Saturday. I, um, firstly, thank you. But, you know, like, firstly, uh, like, the whole thing was all to build up to this fight to where we are today. It mo probably motivated him to get here and I'm motivated as well and it will make up a good fight. Talking about bad blood and stuff like that, I don't know, my blood is good, I don't have bad blood with nobody. And if, if um, he has bad blood with me, it's, it's his problem. I'm just focusing on winning and being happy and I don't have bad blood with him. 100%. We hear that. No bad blood. Um, in terms of your answers right now, um, connecting or regarding Luke. Graham, if I can bring you into the conversation, um, what's led you guys to put Temba um, and Luke into this title fight? What made you think, listen, these are the two guys that should be fighting for the title? So it's actually been such a long, crazy journey, this welterweight Grand Prix. Luke Michael was supposed to fight Conrad Siabi, which was cancelled three times. Mm. This guy got thrown at the hardest opponents we could possibly find, and he absolutely demolished. Came through them. Jose de Rocha, I mean, he, this guy is the one to watch out for going into this right now. Um, and it was natural for us to give Luke the opportunity to fight for the title. After that, those opportunities had been taken away from him. And now we're sitting in a situation where it's kind of organically happened that these guys were former teammates mm. um, many moons ago. They've both separated, gone their own ways. And the bad blood, as it were, has stemmed out of an existing relationship that was never, I don't think it was ever phenomenal to start out with. And Timber believes, in, and I'm, I know he's standing next to me, sitting next to me, so I'm going to speak for him, and he can say how he feels. But this guy, I've never met somebody who believes that he should be uh, the champion so strongly. He is so convinced that this is his title, and that almost Luke doesn't deserve to be in there. It's, uh, that's the feeling I get, and in every interaction that's heated and is that they're in each other's faces, um, I feel like Luke is saying, hey, I deserve to be here, and he's going, no, you don't. I'm just, you're just an obstacle for me on Saturday night. I'm going to wow. take you out. And I'm yeah. <laughs> really jumping the gun on I'm putting words in there. No, it, 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 is, it, is, it is what it is, you know, like everybody, like still, it's a fight. It's still a fight. That's a man that's got two hands, two legs, and he's still going to come to fight, you know. It's a fight game, and I must be smart, intelligent, and ruthless on Saturday night. I can't overlook him. That's, that's, a, that's, that's the thing, you know. Like, to be honest with you, he motivated me. I didn't need my alarm to wake up for this one. He motivated me because, you know, I, I know what's on the line. I know what's there on the line for me, you know. And that's, that's, that's what, what was important for me. I don't underestimate him because, like I said before yesterday, that if I do underestimate this guy, which I don't, if, let's say I'm dumb, I underestimate this guy and I listen to the world saying, yeah, Temba, you're going to win the fight. I believe I'll win the fight on Saturday night, and that's right. But if I do underestimate this guy, if I was dumb and underestimated him, what will happen is that I'll be disrespecting myself, disrespecting the hard work that I've put in for so many years. I've been in this fighting game probably since I was 19, I'm 28 now. So all that hard work, all those sacrifices, all those surgeries, all those things, like all, everything, everything that I've gone through to get to here, I'll be disrespecting that and underestimate this guy right in front of my opportunity, one of my bucket list and just let this guy take it. No, I'm not going to do that. Saturday night, I'll be sharp, smart, ruthless in that cage, and I'll win the fight. After the fight, then I'll be cool. Um, you just said you're not going to um, underestimate Luke Michael. You're not trying to be complacent. What do you think that he brings to you or brings to the fight that's going to be a danger to you in terms of Saturday? What Luke, are his strengths? I don't know. He should, he should be here. I don't know where he is. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. He, 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 he would answer what, what's strong with him, you know, like I don't know what, is, what he is strong with. Um, what I know is that I know what I'm good at. I know what, what I can do. I know he, he can answer for himself. I can't. I can't. I don't know. What I know is that I'm going to win. That's, that's his weakness that he's going to lose to me. That's the problem. Graham, um, in terms of us wrapping up, can I just throw the last question at you? Whoever wins this um, title fight in terms of the welterweight crown, will they be facing a guy like Conor Tsiabi? Is he back to fitness? What's happening there? Um, actually, we were talking about it now. Um, what's next for the, for, the, for the winner of this fight? Um, and I would like to see, there's, there's a couple of guys in the mix. The number one guy for me is a guy named Sean DeLunger from Cape Town. Um, he's the guy that I think that would make the most sense for one of these guys to fight. But they've got a big charge on their hands this Saturday. And, and there's one thing I just wanted to wrap up on. This whole fight for me, watching it unfold, um, I've never seen sort of the nuances of like things happen with fighters that have happened with these two guys. One of them from this specific man is he's been adamant in not speaking out. He's on his own, he'll say his own piece. But he's been quite candid and, and reserved in comparison to how he's been in the past, only because every time I see him, I say, well, why don't you say this on social media? He says, I just want to make sure Luke Michaels is going to arrive on the night. You know, he just, he just wants this fight so badly to happen. Yeah, yeah, okay. it, it, yeah I have years to fight. We need to fight, and I'm glad, I'm happy he's here. I'm and I wish him luck to the fight now. We're out of time. We're going to have to uh, keep it there. That was, of course, to my immediate <laughs> left, Graham Cartmel, Vice President of a Talent Acquisition, Acquisition rather, at the UFC, and, of course, at Temba Garumba. He's, of course, the welterweight title contender. He'll be Excellent. taking on at Luke Michael at EFC 82. Takes place, Carnival City. At your sports, here's Marcel.